seen that. I ain't talking about what I heard. I seen it. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Thank so you, Jesus. we have to understand mm -hmm. that sometimes God shows you things yes. because in, in you out there, God may show you something way out the ordinary because he got you called to a higher calling. Mm -hmm. So therefore, he has to show you in his mercy a little bit more of a miracle that he may not show someone else because of a certain reason. This sister here was hemorrhaging to death. 1996. Bleeding to death. But she heard my teaching and hadn't been in the church that long. But she heard my teaching on faith and she stood on the word of God. And, and they started to call the ambulance. It's now called, 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 called Bishop. I went out there and prayed for her. Another sister right here was changing the towels. And I'm talking about bath towels. Full of blood. And we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And finally God spoke and said, get up. He's gone. That devil's gone. Hallelujah. And I told the minister that was with me, I said, now, by midnight, she'll be healed. Amen. And when I got home, it, I believe Vance Evans called me. Amen. Said, right after y'all left, mm -hmm. said, the bleeding stopped. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. So, Thank you, now, now, why is there not more miracles pronounced? Because there's too much unbelief now. That's right. Y'all hear me? Amen. There's too much unbelief. And where the spirit of unbelief is, you're not going to find divine miracles. Now, I ain't talking about these, these, these con miracles that Benny Hinn and them people talk about. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about real miracles. Amen. Where you got a household of faith standing together in one accord, God is going Amen. to move. Amen. And he will move. Amen. But we've got to stay together in one accord. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, where am I at? Oh, all right. Concerning the question. All right, well, this simply uh, to move along. Uh, verses uh, that expound that drunkard can't inherit the kingdom of heaven and uh, strong drink is a reproach, so, so forth. All right, question nine. Did Jesus command to baptize Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Matthew 28 19. Right now, <coughs> dividing. Elder Brennan. All right. No. In Matthew 28 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Now, Father is not his name. Father is not a proper noun. Now, the apostles knew this, but you got churches today that don't know this. Now, if the apostles baptized all of them, baptized in Jesus' name, what about Matthew 28 and 19? Well, the apostles knew the name of the Father was Jesus, the name of the Son was Jesus, the name of the Holy Ghost was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not three persons, but one God. Amen. 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 So, I had a sister in the Church of God in Christ once asked me, said, now Jesus said, baptize Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And you go to that church that baptizes in Jesus' name. Now, you going to disobey Jesus? And you know I was a baby saint then, just coming to Jesus only. And you know I left away from there scratching my head. Because Matthew 28 19 is literal. But you got to rightly divide it. If, it if, if, if so, why did the apostles disobey him? And the apostles wrote the Bible. Jesus ain't never wrote nothing in the Bible. Did y'all know that? Amen. Jesus never wrote one scripture. Amen. The only thing he ever wrote was in sand. Amen. And nobody knew what he wrote in sand. <laughs> All right, Matthew 20, 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. He's the Father in creation, John 1 and 10. Son in redemption, Matthew 1, 21. Holy Ghost in dwelling, Romans 8 and 9. All right, 10. Uh, using the line upon line, how do we know David had taken the Nazarite vow? All right, Evangelist. I got 1 Chronicles 19. Let's turn to it. 1 Chronicles 19. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. Chronicles 19. Mm -hmm. 
See, nowhere in the Bible that says David uh, took the Nazarite vow. But, we, but by using line for line, we find out he must have. Nineteen. Uh, jump right in, verse, verse fourteen. Yeah. Wherefore Haman took David's servants and shaved them and cut off their garments in the midst of their buttocks and sent them away. Now, now, when David sent the messengers to make a peace offering with uh, with that heathen tribe, they thought that the messengers were spies, so they knew the Hebrew laws. They knew it was a great embarrassment to cut their beard off and cut their hair off Amen. and cut their clothes off, exposing their buttocks. Amen. So that's exactly what they did to David's messengers and sent them back to David. Amen. All right, now in verse 5. Then there went certain and told David how the men were served, and he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. David would not let them messengers come back to the holy city until their beards had grown back. Yes. So we know that if it was good enough for David's servants, Amen. it had to be good enough for David himself. Amen. 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 All right. All Hebrew males took the Nazarite vow <laughs> and the circumcision uh, ceremony when they were born. All right. Did the Apostle Paul take the Nazarite vow? Paul wrote most of the New Testament scripture. All right, let me have somebody who ain't, 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 ain't never asked. Some, some of y'all ain't, ain't asked no question now. Raise your hand. Now. All right, Mother. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. All right, Mother said, yes, Paul took the Nazarite vow. Now, Paul wrote grace. Paul wrote that you don't have to be circumcised. Amen. Well, he did take the Nazarite vow. Amen. Let's look at Acts, not only him, but his, his servants Amen. took it. Acts 18, Amen. chapter. That's right. That's right. He didn't keep it, but he still took it. Yes. <laughs> and jump right in at verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Sincrea, for he had a vow. He, when he got ready to go to this other city, he decided to remove his vow, and he shaved his head. Amen. Now, we say this in this context, under the dispensation of grace, you don't have to take the Nazarite vow. But, if you decide to, who's going to condemn you? Amen. If it's good enough for Jesus and the apostles, how come it ain't good, about, good enough for us today? If we decide to. But like I said, now don't misunderstand me. It has nothing to do with salvation. Because we're under grace. But, if you decide to draw closer, there's nothing wrong with it. Amen. Praise God. All right. I love my vow. Amen. Amen. I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah. Amen. All right, we, we answered question 14. Concerning question 14, well, uh, huh? 13. 13? Oh, okay, what's 13? What scripture would you use to prove water baptism? No, I don't have 13. It's the last one on the first page. It's about the word. It's about Oh, what scripture would you prove? Yeah, that's important. What scripture would you prove? Would you use to prove water baptism is important to salvation? Amen. Are you the Lansing? First Peter three twenty one. First Peter three and twenty one. All right, let's turn to it. First Peter three and twenty one. That wasn't the one I had in mind, but it might be a good one. <laughs> the life figure were to even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's a good one, yeah. Uh -huh. Now, let, let's examine this. Uh, yes, I'll bring you that in. Oh, no, I was going to say a different scripture. A different, yeah, okay. That might be the one I had in mind. All right. The like figure wherein to even...